Hello and welcome to Great Dalton. Today we're going to be making a start on this final third of the layout and to do that we're going to be starting first with the road which will take us from this corner down to this junction here um, which will allow you to go to the town or to Great to Dalton Central. So uh, we'll be doing the road but I'll be taking it one step further because I will be adding moving cars. So to do that I'll be using the Magna Rail system. Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Magna Rail system. Everard Junction did a very in-depth video on installation um, for his double O gauge layout. But I thought um, if you don't know it I'll just give you a quick sort of summary of how it works. You have a track which you lay down um, and then you have this chain which lies in that track. You then insert some magnets into that chain. Uh, your road surface then goes on top and then you have these um, these sort of brass sliders which you put magnets in. The magnets then travel along your road surface and then you can slot cars onto them and therefore you have moving cars. Um, in HO scale you have these cyclists as well which are quite good and you can also motorise some boats. Now the idea of moving cars on this layout never came into any consideration when I first planned this layout. I've been inspired a bit by Everard Junction and uh, Nick at Rural Nodder Railways who's recently installed the Fowler car system into his double O gauge layout Western Interchange. Um, I also really wanted to put moving cars on a future layout of mine um, but then I realised that most of the things on a Magna Rail system can be removed as long as I don't use any glue on it so I thought well I've got a road to do, may as well add some cars to it. So the route of the road. In this corner here will be one of the return loops which you get in the set. Uh, that will be hidden by the branch line which is going to go over it with a very, very small clearance but hopefully that will hide it well enough to not be seen. Uh, the road will come down here, sorry the lines get a little bit confusing, I've changed the route a few times. These will be the two that you're sort of following. That box there is for where the motor is going to sit. Um, and then following down here it's going to curve to the left a bit and then curve round to the right where it will come over the branch line. So that's the cat on the roof again. It will continue down here, and then here is another cutout for another motor. This will sort of be a um, slip road right hand junction because there will be a ramp down there to get to the station car park for Delton Central. And then we come down here which is a slight uh, decline, and then over here will be the next return loop which will be disguised as a small roundabout. Now overall this length is about just under 2 metres, so for that I have two of the starter sets which include all the sliders, a lot of track, the chain, two motor sections and then all the return loops and then I've got these two extension sets as well which just include some extra chain and some more track. So hopefully that will be enough to cover all this area. In terms of where I got this from, I got it from an online store called uh, Macatis which I think is French. Um, I got it for a fairly good price but I had to pay quite a hefty customs fee so I really hope that I have enough here because it's going to be quite expensive to order another set into the country. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. So this is what you get in the starter set. We've got several lengths of this uh, flexible track and then you've got the adapters which um, go on the motor pieces of track. You've got all these chain links, everything's on a sprue which makes it a little bit more time consuming but I suppose it's cheaper to manufacture. You've got some return loop wheels there some screws to screw down the tracks with, some more flexor jack, some more fixing screws, you've got your sliders in here and you've got a one millimeter drill bit. Now I don't know if that's the pilot hole for the screws or whether that's to drill holes in small cars to put the sliders in, so we'll see. You've then got this motor housing thing and then you've got some more track and then you've got your motor. I did have a look inside the other box because I had to get some measurements of where to, of how wide to uh, cut the holes for the motors and how wide the road would be. And then you've got this instruction booklet here which is mainly just pictures with very little writing so it's a, bit, a little bit hard to follow but I'm sure we'll get there. Right, that's every piece taken off the sprues for the track and the return loops. I've assembled both motor units into their housings and I've dropped them into place. 
Over here we have all the screws for fixings, our two pots of sliders and the magnets and then we've got a million chain links which is not going to be fun to put together. So on to laying the track now. Um, immediately there's a bit of a difference between double O gauge and N gauge in that the spacing of the tracks should be different to accommodate for the difference in road width. So essentially I can have two tracks running next to each other quite nicely. Now when we get to the motor unit it's a bit wider so the track is going to have to be spaced off a little bit. Now you can just have the road randomly getting wider at some point but if you want to disguise it well you can put sort of a, a bollard a concrete patch in the middle with some bollards or you could do as I'm going to do um, the ramp for the station car park will actually come down here so if you're coming from the left there will be a right hand slip road in the middle of these two lanes now that would require the road lanes to be wider apart so that's how I could disguise that now with the return loops as I said in the introduction there will be a small roundabout here a three way roundabout which I can disguise that for so that works well Another quick advantage of um, N-Gage over double O-Gage is that double O-Gage cars generally are quite a lot heavier, especially the Oxford die cast being metal, whereas N-Gage cars, even the Oxford ones, weigh next to nothing. So um, it's stated on the Magna Rail instructions that each motor should be able to haul approximately 1.8 metres of chain. I think overall this will be about nearly 3 metres of chain or a bit more, so even if they can't quite handle the chain there will be a lot less drag from the cars as they weigh considerably less. And the sliders will be smaller as well so that's a bit less drag too. So onto the track line now. I've noticed one mistake that I may have made already actually. Uh, the motor units, I won't be able to move them if the clips don't line up as you can't really shorten these bits of track. They have to line up with the length that they've got. So I might just have to extend this uh, slot a little bit to fit the motor in a bit better. But we'll see. So these are quite easy, they just clip together, like that. Well, yeah, we we'll just clip these together. And they stick together quite nicely and then you can just screw them to the baseboard or whatever you're screwing them to with these ones that are supplied. And then they, uh, they're very flexible because they're only joined by a tiny little bit of plastic in the middle of each one. And then, nice and flexible. So let's get on with that then. So that's the uh, track laid. It's not got to be perfectly smooth. In real life, cars don't drive perfectly smooth. There'll always be sort of fluctuations and wobbling in steering, so it's not got to be a dead smooth curve, but it's looking okay. Everything went down okay. I had to extend this hole slightly to move the motor assembly over to ensure that that curve would fit in, as it was a bit too short or too long, depending on what piece of track I used. You've noticed that I've only used one screw on each piece of um, track. A couple of reasons for this. Number one is that it doesn't actually need it really. That's fairly firm, that's not going to go anywhere to be honest. Number two is if I need to make any slight alterations, I can just simply use the other hole to drill a new hole in, rather than taking that one out and trying to move it ever so slightly and drill a new hole next to it because I just won't be able to. Thirdly, it's just going to be easier to take out, hopefully this time next year, or whenever I move won't have to take out as many screws. So now we can get on with the chain and the sliders. So the chain actually comes in different sections depending on what sliders you want, what magnets you want to put in each one for the different sliders. 
So what I'll do is I'll make up which sliders I want to do first, put those in the track and then I'll just join all them up with the different links. This is going to take a very long time due to this being quite a lengthy run and all of the chain links are on a sprue and it's just going to take a long time to cut them all out, file them down and whatnot. So with the Magnal set you get two sets of sliders these generally are your N gauge ones and then your double O gauge ones, however these will fit a N gauge car quite nicely if I just bend the ends up. So they'll be going on and then I can also use these as well. Fortunately most of the Oxford die cast cars um, have turning wheels so I can use virtually all of the sliders, nothing will go to waste and I should be able to get at least 12 cars on this run. So let's get on with that next and we'll join you once that's all finished. So I've just made up the chain links which contain all of the magnets. We've got various different sizes for the different types of sliders. These magnets are quite easy, they just drop in into these links. They're an interference fit so they're quite stiff in there, there's no need for adhesive, they're not going to come out. I've got 16 of these, um, that's the maximum amount of sliders I actually have. Whether I'll be able to run 16 vehicles or not is another case, but at least I've got the magnets to accommodate should the situation arise where well, I am able to run 16 vehicles. So now comes the long part is uh, completing the chain and then we can get onto the surface. Well that took a long time but I've cut all of the chain links off and I've now completed the entire chain with all the magnets spaced evenly apart for various vehicles. So it's all good. I've done a test run, it went okay until this return loop popped out and I had quite a build up of chain um, there must be some sort of capacitance either in the plug that I'm using or in the um, motors as it is about a two second delay so that didn't help either. So I've just popped these on and then we can run it and see how it goes. Generally it appears to be working quite well. Now just as a temporary supply I've just hooked up the motors to my 12 volt DC power supply that I use for my lighting circuit. Um, that is a bit of a problem because it's very fast however that's not permanent. What I'll do is I'll make my own sort of controller with a 12 volt DC power supply and a vari variable resistor so I can control the speed as that is very fast right now. I don't know what sort of scale speed that is but it's going to make the vehicles go around and roundabout at a lightning speed, so uh, that's not very realistic. So now that the actual track and the chain is done, and I'm happy it's working all okay, all the magnets are in, I can get on to filling in all of the gaps around the, um, well, bringing up the road surface to the right level. Now, just like every odd junction, I'll be using this cork strip, which is used for expansion joints in laminate flooring. This says it's 7.5 mil thick, um, but it seems to match perfectly with the top of the, um, little tabs here so I should be able to just use that to um, glue all of it down I'll probably just use some Gorilla Glue to stick it down and then we'll be able to move on to getting the road surface done as well Okay, so now I have filled in all the gaps and created my base for my uh, road surface. Um, I've filled in as many gaps as possible with all the cork. There's a few bits I have left which I can't really fill like these gaps on the motor areas, but hopefully that should be okay. So now onto the road surface. Um, I bought some card from Hobbycraft. It's uh, 300 GSM which roughly equates to 0.3 millimeters thick, which is quite good. It's got a glossy side and a matte side. I'll stick the glossy side on the underneath um, so there's less resistance for the sliders. And also because hopefully if it's uh, it feels like a bit of a laminated um, material on the glossy side. So I hope that will reduce the glue absorption. Um, it's quite a thin card, so it might be a little bit of glue absorption and it might go a little bit rippled but hopefully not to um, much of an extent. 
So I've got one piece in over here. That's just um, just stuck it on now. I'll trim it down to the cork once it's all dry. I've got a slider here, um, so I can just show you that this is uh, sufficient. So we can we can determine that that card is okay. It's not too thick. The magnet's not going to lose its um, base in the chain, and it's uh, it's moving quite freely. So that's what we'll get on with next. We'll get the rest of this card down up until a certain point, and then we can get all the sliders made up and uh, start to run some bits. Right, things were going well until we've had a little bit of a disaster. Um, I've just been sticking this card down and I've been running it with each piece of card to make sure we have no running issues. And everything was going fine um, until the chain just suddenly jumped out the track here and it's just gone everywhere now. So under here somewhere is a large gap which I need to get out. So what I'm going to do is just reverse the chain, uh, take it very easily, small increments, uh, try and get the gap out to here where it's uncovered and then I can try and put the chain back. So we'll see how that goes. It's quite easy to reverse the motor, you just need to swap the polarity round on the plug, which I'll do. Reverse and we're ready to go. You might be asking why not just run it in the direction it's supposed to go. Um, well, initially only about 15 links came out and I cleaned that all up and then I ran it again and then about another 20 came out. So I don't want to run it in that direction anymore. So we'll see how it goes in the opposite direction. Also, I think the gap is only to about here, and then you've got the return loop over there, so I don't want to push the end of the chain, wherever it may be, into the return loop, because I think that would cause issues. I'd rather bring it round and come back. So let's just get all these off to reduce any resistance from the magnets. I think that didn't help having that slider on. Um, I'm not sure what's happened, to be honest, whether the track has, the chain has just jumped up and got caught on the card. So, well, we'll see. And, uh, we'll do this now. We'll take it in small increments and try and get it out. Right, there's the end of the gap, which is good news. We'll just do it again. Now, we've got a bit of an issue here. That's okay. At least it's accessible. Let's try and get the rest out. This is promising, because if this doesn't work, I've got to take up all that card again. There it is. Lovely. Right, now I can pull that round. We have our gap, and I can get on with some repair work. Okay, so the chain's all back in successfully, just about. I've got my slider here. So I'm a little bit reluctant to run this, but it does need testing ideally at each stage. So let's give it a run and see how it goes. I'm going to point the camera over here, but my eyes are going to be on the chain. Okay, that was successful. There's a slight clunking over here. When the, when the slider goes over a certain bit of cards. I'm not what, sure what that is. I'll have to investigate that. But I think as that was a successful run, we shall continue with the card and I might not run it again until all the card is placed. It's a little bit risky, but it does take some time to take place the chain back and there is a chance it might not come back if it goes um, do loudly again. So yeah, we'll get on with the card and We'll get back to you. Okay, although I said I wasn't going to run it until I'd stuck all the card down, I just caught, sort of couldn't stop myself really, as I really wanted to look, know what it looked like running. Um, so I've trimmed down this first section of card, I've stuck some sellotape between the joints to help um, sort of ease any of the warping that's uh, occurred, which it has a little bit. I don't know whether that's absorption of glue or if the card's just absorbed a bit of moisture. Um, I've made up a couple of sliders here. We've got one of the small ones with the very tiny um, magnets. And then we've got one of the bigger ones here, which uh, stretches across two links. So we're just going to run that round until they're both on the card. And then we've got a couple of test vehicles here. This one's got two holes underneath 
that are already there for some reason and I've had to take one of the screw holes out to get two holes in this one. Some of these cars will need drilling um, to sit on the sliders but that will be in the future. Um, over here I have a speed controller now. I got this from Amazon so I can slow the track right down and we don't have to have cars going at a scale speed of about 80 miles an hour. So let's just slowly ease it round and get the sliders both on the card. Right, that's that. Now we can drop the Mini on. And then we can drop the ambulance on. Ideally these should be quite loose on the sliders. You don't want them to be too stiff. And then you want a bit of freedom. So let's now give it its maiden voyage. It's not looking too bad. I see the Mini is driving the skill up a little bit. I think that's because the magnet only sits on one leak. So yeah, if we look at this slider, it's so small that it only sits across one link, which means any fluctuations in where the link is actually sitting, like whether it's going straight or skew with, whether it's slack or tensioned, is going to affect how the car drives. The ambulance, on the other hand, is a lot smoother as the link is, well, the uh, slider is much longer and it sits across two links, meaning that it can be nice and stable. So I think that's something I'm going to have to live with. I can't really get away from it. It does look a bit rubbish when the car is driving like that along the uh, road. But I guess that's one of the compromises we'll have to make for N-Gage Magna Rail. So um, now we'll just be getting the rest of the car finished, trimming it all down, making up some sliders, and then we'll see how it all runs, I guess. Okay, well here we are. The card is all stuck down firmly. I've trimmed it to the right shape to match with the road. And I've got 13 of the 16 sliders that I've got on the uh, track now. I've not got one of the big ones. I've lost it somehow. I'm still yet to find that. Um, but I've got seven of those and then I've got, I think I've got three of these small ones and then three of these medium tight ones. So we're just going to run it now to see how it deals with this amount of sliders on. Uh, as I said in the intro, uh, I thought there was an advantage with N-Gage being lighter cars, but in the end I realised that it's the resistance from the magnets that causes the drag, not the weight of the cars. So there really is no advantage here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. If it struggles, we'll take off the small ones, because in that test run I did, the Mini did not drive very well at all. Um, probably because of the weight of the car, whereas the bigger ones should drive a bit better as so they've got a bit more weight to them. So we'll take off the small sliders if um, if they don't run very well and then we'll see how it gets on without those. But let's just test it first with all 13 of these on. Yeah, you see it's struggling quite a lot, it's jumping. Okay, well let's stop that quickly and we'll take off the small sliders. Of course, once I take them off, it's going to be an absolute challenge to find if I need to put them back on. Because I don't have a magnet tracer, so I could just be doing it by feel. As all of the track is now covered in card. So let's run it again, now we've got less sliders on. It's marginally better, but it could probably do with a few fewer. It's a bit jumpy but it's running a lot smoother, so what I'll probably do is maybe take one more off and then we'll give it a test with some vehicles. Now, these are the vehicles I have, I've got a mixture of vans, cars and small cars. Um, some of the cars I've actually had to drill, 
I don't know if you can see that well enough. There's a small hole in the front which I've had to drill. With the drill bit that you get supplied with the pack, it is a one mil drill bit, which is too small for my drill chuck, so I've had to buy a smaller chuck to put in the drill. Obviously you've got to be careful when drilling these cars not to go through the bonnet. Um, it's got to be as far forward and as central as possible to get the best results. So let's put some vehicles on and we'll see how it runs. It's just started to jump again now. There is a little bit of resistance from the cello tape as well, which doesn't help. It's a much stickier surface in the card. I probably should have put that underneath, but lessons learned, I suppose. Okay, so the vehicles are now on. I've only managed to get eight on. I think that's all it's going to be able to run smoothly. Um, if this runs smoothly, we might be able to try one more vehicle, but it does seem like it's been overwhelmed a bit by the amount of resistance. So I've got the black cab, the RSE van, green jag, the police jag, transit van, royal mail van, and a couple of the uh, Range Rovers, Land Rovers. I've taken out the screws which connect the body to the chassis. A couple of reasons for this. One, it reduces the weight of the car, and ever so slightly. And two, the um, screws are magnetic, obviously, so they bring the car down onto the card more, which just increases the resistance further. So I've taken all those out. Um, hopefully it will help a little bit. So let's have a look if we get it going. So it's quite jumpy. Um, so if you can hear it, see if they go around the turn loop. Oh, that one's gone backwards. <laughs> a very skilled driver, that one. Oh, this one's got stuck. Okay, so that test one didn't do well. Um, I'll probably have to make some modifications to it. I'll see if I can try and remove the cellar tape and find an easier way to um, go between the joints. There's been a bit of a pile up here. Obviously one of the magnets has got caught on this sticky sellotape surface um, and it's just caused the rest to go off. So that's going to be challenging now because I need to find where that magnet is in the track and then pull it back on. The return loop um, has also got sellotape on because I accidentally uh, cut the card too short up there and the wheels were getting stuck on the card because they were slightly going off it. So that was a bit of a, a balls up on my behalf. So I've had to put a bit of sellotape there just to stick a piece of card on and that somehow managed to turn the taxi backwards. I'm surprised it actually carried on driving, to be honest. But um, right, I'll make some modifications, see what I can fix, and then we'll have another go in a bit. Right, just found another issue. Um, things are going well. I've removed this piece of sellotape because that seemed to be where the cars were getting caught. Not sure why they're not getting caught on any of the other pieces of sellotape, but um, nonetheless that's removed. Um, and what that's done is it's made a very, very slight lip in the cardboard. Now with N-gauge vehicles there's a lot less clearance from the road to the actual chassis. And this tiny little number plate under the um, car got caught on it. And it stopped. So I won't be able to run the taxi. Um, that's uh, can't really do anything about that because that lip is exactly where it sits over the chain. So I can't glue it, of course. Um, it's card, so it's going to warp slightly, but that's just something I'll have to deal with. So I'll have to run a different car on it. I just can't run this taxi because of where the number plate is, which is a shame because I wanted the taxi to run. It gives a bit of variation. Right, it's been running now for the best part of five minutes without any issues. I've had to take another piece of sellotape off over here. I've reduced the amount of vehicles to, I think we've got eight now. Um, it's been difficult to find the magnets every time they come off. It's still very jumpy. Um, I did actually test it with just three vehicles and it was still quite jumpy. So I'm not sure if that's just the material of the card resistance or not. Once I paint it, it might smooth up a little bit. We'll see. Um, also, as the, as the sliders go over the card, they'll make it smoother anyway as it wears. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be as jumpy as I continue to use it. So we'll then just give you a couple of shots of it running and then we'll get on to uh, painting the road surface.
the thing does have to be said about these Vic is because they're so light, they have very little grip on the road. And as you can see, right, if I can focus, the wheels don't turn, which obviously uh, ruins the effect of the vehicle's driving, but I don't think it's anything they can really get away from. Sometimes the vehicles turn, uh, the Jaguars seem to be quite good, the vans not so much. With that Jag, the wheels are just completely still. I can try and lubricate the axle, see if that helps. Obviously I've had to cut these sliders quite small, so they actually fit under the bonnet. But still the wheels seem to be slightly off the um, card, because of the height of the magnets, which again doesn't help. But these are all the things that we have to sort of overcome when we try it with N-Gage. Um, I'd like to say that this system is multi-scale, but I think it is very favourable for double O-Gage. Still, it's working, um, in essence. Right, onto the road surface now. I'm going to be airbrushing an enamel paint onto the card. Just got this uh, dark grey colour which I've lightened up a bit with a bit of white. I'm going to airbrush it on as opposed to um, brush it on, due to a couple of reasons. First one, I don't want to apply too much paint, otherwise the card might absorb it even more than it's absorbed the glue and get even more warped. And secondly, I don't want to add any brush marks which may cause extra resistance with lumps and bumps. So I'm going to be airbrushing it. I'll probably use a ratio of about 60 to 40 paint, um, paint thinner to paint, so it's not too runny. Again, so the card doesn't absorb it all. And then we can move on to the last part, which will be adding some road markings. So let's just paint it first, and then we'll test the vehicles again afterwards. Uh, there is one slight issue I might face when airbrushing, and that is I will be putting a thinner coat of paint on it. So the um, sliders will eventually wear through the paint onto the card. So I might have to reapply some paint at some point, but we'll see how thick it is and what the sliders do to it. And welcome back. The road surface is all now painted. I've stuck two coats of the airbrushed enamel on and we are ready to test. Um, upon initial feel of the surface it's a little bit rougher so that might affect the um, sliders but hopefully that'll have the advantage of gripping the wheels a bit better to allow them to turn. So let's turn it on and see how it runs. Again, it's quite jumpy, but hopefully, with a lot of use, that will wear down into a nice smooth surface for it to travel on. At the minute, it's hopefully it's stuck. Let's just say that. Let's see what it's got stuck on. Right, as I've been painting it and the wet paint has been set to dry, I think a small amount of uh, particles have just dropped onto the road surface, and that's what the slider got caught on there. So what I think I'll do is, because that was running quite jumpy anyway, I'm going to put some sliders on it without any vehicles and run it for a good 15-20 minutes to see if it can sort of engrave itself a smoother surface to slide along and that will get rid of any bumps or particles or small crumbs and hopefully that will allow it to run a bit smoother. So I'll get on with that and then we'll see how it runs after that has been finished. Okay, that's been running for about 15 minutes now. I can see through my eyes that it's um, 
engraved a slight groove into the uh, paint. I don't think I can pick it up on the camera. So we're going to try it with some vehicles now. I only have six sliders on, as it seemed to be running quite smoothly with that. Um, I'll test it with these lightweight vehicles. I've got no. I've only got one van, and all the rest are cars. Um, if they run okay, then we'll try and add another slider until it starts to go a bit jumpy. So let's get these on, and then we can test it. Right, vehicles are all on. Let's uh, switch it on. It's a little bit jumpy, but I think the tyres might also need to engrave a small, smooth surface into the uh, road surface before it can run completely smoothly, but it's not too bad really. They're making the return mix, they're moving, the majority of the wheels are turning, so I'm quite happy with that at the minute. I'm just going to leave that running for a bit, and then we'll see if it gets any smoother, and then we can try and add a couple more sliders, as I was hoping for at least 10 vehicles on this. I knew I wasn't going to be able to have all 16, but 6 is uh, just a few too little, really. Okay, it's been running for a good 10 minutes now. I've managed to add a 7th vehicle, but I think that is the limit. As you can tell, it's a little bit jumpy. Um, it always seems to happen at the same point, so I'm not sure what's causing that. But overall, I'm quite happy with the results. I'm going to leave this video here because obviously there is the road markings to do, but that's uh, not really part of the Magnarel system. And I want to get some of the embankments and um, other road features done before I get the markings done. So I'll leave you here. Um, I'm just going to leave you with a few running shots of it. Um, thank you for joining me on this uh, different sort of project. It's gone fairly well. I've got some cars running, which is nice, uh, even if it's a short stretch of road. The wheels don't turn on some of the vehicles, but generally it's gone quite well. So uh, thank you for watching, and um, I'll join you next time.